This is a Nazi concentration camp in Niche, which was operational during 1941 to 1944. The Jews, Gypsies and Serbian people were kept here. This was a small concentration camp, so the people were kept for about a month and then they would be taken to another concentration camp or probably to Auschwitz. The man in the picture is Commanding Officer Schulz or also known as Stickman. He killed people with just one stick. He probably cracked their skulls and he had a technique by which he killed many people. There is a lot of record which we find here about the people who were here for some time, their schooling, where they came from, all the documents can be seen. The camp used to have barbed wires all around it. This is how it looked and 147 people died while trying to escape. So they built a big wall and after that no one could escape the camp. And as you can see that uh, more than 800 people from this camp and other prisons were taken to Bubanj and shot dead because they tried to escape the camp. This is where the prisoners would be kept and uh, they had to sleep in this room on the hay. But for political prisoners, uh, there was the barbed wires in the attic and uh, they used to torture these uh, people every day. We now move on to the first floor. There are records of Jews who had uh, fake IDs but who were found out and brought to this concentration camp, how their lives changed and some were lucky enough to survive the war and uh, the others were not so fortunate and were shot at this camp or died uh, somehow during the war. There were about uh, 12,000 people who died at the Bubanj Memorial. This is the list of names according to the alphabets and uh, many of them were from the concentration camp. So that is why it has the concentration camp has a room in memory of all those people who died at the Bubanj Memorial.
The Red Cross Society also helped the children who were all left alone at home or also taken to concentration camps and it is because of this society that many of them survived the war. There are records of many doctors who were here in the camp. Uh, they had been communists and arrested or they were Jews and they tried their best to help the inmates uh, after the torture with whatever they had. Some of them had access to the Red Cross Society so they would get whatever they could and try and help the people who needed medical help. There are records uh, of people who were in this camp about the kind of food that they had and how it changed and uh, what they survived on. There are records about uh, how the different kinds of prisoners were treated to different kinds of torture and the Germans maintained terror in the 
scam by even using dogs to tear apart body parts and also shoot people randomly so that no one had the courage to uh, rebel against them or create any problems for them. And now we move on to the attic where the political prisoners were held. Uh, they were kept in solitary confinement and uh, these cells used to have barbed wires. Some of the cells still have the barbed wire where they would have to sleep. The cells are uh, claustrophobic. They are pitch dark except for a little opening at the top but there is hardly any light which comes in and I'm sure it would be very uncomfortable. Uh, at night, uh, there would be no light at all. So it was quite uh, suffocating for prisoners to be kept here and they would be tortured on a regular basis. In the beginning of 19th century, in 80 or 1804, Serbs organized first uprising against Ottomans. During that uprising, five year, years later, in 1809, there was a battle on Chagar Hill. Chagar is hill, six kilometers from here. In that battle died 4,000 Serbian rebellions and 10,000 Ottomans. Uh, Serbian leader Stevan Sinjevic, he was on Trenger Hill with 4,000 people, you can see him here on this picture. He was on Trenger Hill and uh, uh, when he realized that he would lose the battle, he, shot at, he finished the battle when he shot at gunpowder storage. In that explosion died Sinjevic and all of his red soldiers, but also a great number of Ottomans. So 4,000 uh, 4, Serbian rebellions and 10,000 Ottomans died in the battle. After the battle, Ottomans commander, Kushi Pasha, he was very angry because, yes, he won in the battle, but he lost 10,000 people. He wanted to take a revenge, he wanted to punish Serbs, and he ordered to his people to cut off heads from Serbian dead bodies. Then they brought heads here, uh, they remove the skins from the heads and they fill the skin, they fill the scalps with cotton and straw and he sent that to Sultan, to Istanbul, like a proof of victory and like, and like a gift. And here they build these four walls and into the walls they build 952 Serbian heads. Uh, the tower was outside, that's the reason why uh, it is in this condition. 
it was outside because the idea of Urshit Pasha was to uh, many people to see the tower. So it was outside more than eight years, exposed to weather and no protection. So most, most of the scouts fall apart because of the weather. But some of them were buried by the citizens here, by the, by the Serbs, because they came and took the skulls to bury it. Uh, he wanted many people to see the tower, so that's the reason why he did, uh, built the tower here, not on Tregar, where the battle was. Here was the entrance in the city, and here was, it's very important, here was a road, uh, main road to east. Here was a passing, uh, main road to east, which connected east and west, and many people passed here every day. So that it was that was warning for all people, not only serves all people, what's happening uh, when someone don't respect Ottomans. The tower was outside uh, since 1809 when the, the Turks built the tower uh, until 1892. It is uh, 83 years. So uh, today we have only 57 skulls here on the walls. And one is separate here, you will see <laughs> later. Uh, one is separate because uh, it is believed that it's the skull of Stevens in Jelic. Uh, Ottomans put one head on the top of the tower. So that's why we believe that it's in Jelic skull, but it's a legend, we are not quite sure about that. Seven years after uh, the skull, after the battle uh, on, on Trager, uh, in 1878, liberation came, and after the liberation, Serbian king Milan Obradovic decided to keep the tower like a monument for all next generation to realize what was the price of the freedom. Uh, so, 14 years after liberation, Serbs built this chapel to protect the tower, and also uh, it was a way to bury these people into the chapel. So that's about the uh, story about Skull Tower. It's very, uh, it, uh, he left us a very nice message. And this, uh, that is, uh, let, uh, let the Serbs uh, keep uh, taking care about this monument because uh, it will teach their children what is the value of one.